Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are solving a slightly challenging exercise from lesson number 10. It's called the flags example and you can find it on the Codility practice page. So we are given an array that represents the altitudes of a terrain for example and we define a peak or a mountain where we have a value surrounded by inferior values. For example number 5 here is preceded by the number 1 which is less than 5 and then after we have the number three, which is also less than five. So five is our first peak. Then the number four here, it's a high altitude that is surrounded by three and three. So both are inferior to four. And therefore this point here is representing a peak. Then we have number four here again and the number six. So in total in this array, in this example, we have four different peaks. And we can represent the terrain with the following graph to make it easier to imagine. So these are our defined peaks. And the story says that we are going on a trip to a range of mountains with relative heights represented in the given array. And the goal is to set flags during our trip. However, setting flags follows a certain number of rules that we are going to define together. First of all, we have to choose how many flags we are carrying through our trip. So you have to know in advance how many flags you are going to carry. And obviously this will be the limit of how many flags you can put uh, on the peaks during your trip. And the ultimate goal is to set the maximum number of flags on the peaks according to certain rules. During our trip, we can set flags only on peaks. And the second rule is that if you take, let's say, k flags, then the distance between any two flags should be greater or equal to k. So basically, we have these two rules. And the distance between two positions, p and q, or two indexes, is the absolute value of p minus q. So here, for example, we have the first two peaks at index 1 and 3. So if I do 3 minus 1, it's equal to 2. And the distance between those two peaks is 2. So if I'm carrying only two flags from the start of my trip, I could put the first flag on the first peak and the second flag on the second peak because we are respecting the minimal distance rule. In fact, this rule is very important to keep in mind because it will play a big role in our solution. It's one of the challenges we have to think about later on. Then if we decide to take three flags instead of two, we can position those on the first peak, then on the third peak, then on the fourth peak. Why? Because the distance between the first two peaks is equal to two, and our number of flags is equal to three, so k, our variable k is equal to three. And in order to respect one of the rules we have just described, we have to have the flags separated by at least three positions. And if we set the first flag on the first peak, we need to count at least three positions before we have the right to put another flag, the second flag, and so on. Now let's try with four different flags. And in this case, we have the first flag is right here. Then the second flag is here because we have a distance of four separating these two peaks. So it's okay. It's respecting the separating distances rule. And then this one we can put here. So even if we take four different flags with us, we can only set three flags on the peaks. There is no place where we can set the fourth flag. And in this case, our maximum number of flags that we could put during a trip is equal to three. And this should be our return value. Our function should return three, which is the maximum number of flags that we could set during a trip on this particular array. So I'm not going to describe the brute approach because anyway, it's lengthy, it's inefficient, and it's not the purpose of this exercise. Just trying to make this video shorter will directly explain the efficient solution. So first we are going to declare a vector p, let's say standing for peaks, that would contain the indexes of the positions of peaks in the array A. So for this example, it would contain the index number 1, the index 3, and the index 5, and finally the index 10, which are the indexes of the four different peaks of this array. Then we have to start by guessing the number of possible flags. How do we do this? Let's consider these peaks of the example and with respect to the uh, distances separating those different peaks. If we have an array of 12 elements, 12 altitudes, it seems that the maximum number of flags is limited by the square root of the length of the array. 
And this is a key idea in the solution. I think it's the purpose of the lesson. And if you have watched the two previous videos of the same lesson number 10 about prime and composite numbers, it would be much easier for you to understand this particular point of the solution. So just to make it clearer, imagine we have an array of numbers. I took an array of 10 values. And imagine that we have the maximum number of peaks that we could fit in such an array. So it would be looking like this. We would have a high number surrounded by two lower numbers and so on for the whole array. Now, if I take two flags, I could position those on the first two peaks. And with three flags, we have to separate by distance of three. So we could fit only two flags again. If we look at these numbers, we notice that if we have a number i of flags, we need the number of i minus 1 distances to separate the flags. Imagine you have two flags, so you need at least one distance that would be available between those two flags. But if you have three flags, you need twice this distance that you are considering to separate three flags. So if I have i flags in my problem, I will need i minus 1 distances to separate those i flags. And each i minus 1 distance, I mean each distance of these distances, should have a length of i. This is how the description of the problem is presenting this. So we need to separate the flags by the number of flags that we had in our backpack at the beginning of the trip. In other words, I need i minus 1 distances of value i to fit in n, which is the uh, size of my array. Otherwise, I wouldn't be fitting within the array. So I could write this slightly differently. We could write that we need i minus 1 times i less or equal than the array n, than the size of the array. Approximately, it can be written also i squared is less or equal than n. And this is what we are going to use in our problem. If it's not clear for you, pause the video and think about it. Maybe repeat the last two minutes of this video. Write this down on a paper until you have got the idea fairly clearly in your mind. The main thing is to know how many distances of k flags I could fit as a maximum within the array of size n. And the reason we are doing all of this is the following. The number of flags I'm looking for in this example is always going to be inferior to the total number of peaks that are present in the array. And the square root of the dimension of the array, which we have just talked about. Remember, it's the i squared or the number of flags squared is always less or equal than n, the uh, size of the array. So i or k, whatever you call it, is always less or equal than the square root of n. So what does this bring in terms of efficiency? If I'm testing for the maximum number of flags I could carry, naturally I would go with a for loop. We start with two flags. We test if we can set those on the peaks of the array. Then we go with three flags. If it works, then fine. We go with four flags. And then if we have four flags and we are setting only three, then we could stop and return the three, the previous number, which is the maximum number of flags we could set on those uh, peaks. But if I already know the maximum number that might be possible, I could take the minimum between these two. And this would represent the maximum limit of flags I could carry. So instead of starting with two flags, then three, and incrementing the number of flags, for efficiency, I would start with the maximum allowed flags for a certain array with certain number of peaks. And in this case, if this particular number doesn't work, if I test it and I cannot fit this square root n number of flags in here, for example, I would decrement the number of flags by one. And this is how I'm going to reach my solution much quicker than starting from the small number of flags and incrementing those. So it's mainly to limit the number of iteration I'm going to have to do in order to test for the maximum number of flags. Remember that this maximum number is limited by two parameters, either the number of peaks or the square root of n. So whichever is less, we are going to take it as the uh, maximum number because obviously we can't put more flags than the number of peaks and we can't fit more flags with a certain distance more than the square root of n. Okay, so this is the main idea of the algorithm. I think writing these down in C++ and in Python would help us further understand how it works. So in C++, this is our solution function. It takes the array A that is given by the problem 
And if the size of A is less than 3, we have less than 3 elements, obviously we can return 0 because we can't define any peak. There are no peaks in an array of size less than 3. Then if this is out of the way, we can define a new vector where we have the indexes of our peaks. Let's call it P for now. And I'm going to scan the elements of the array A, except the first and the last elements, because these are the edges of the array. And we're going to test if AI is greater than AI minus 1. And at the same time, AI is greater than AI plus 1. If this is the case, then we have identified a peak at position I. And I'm going to push the index I inside of the peaks vector. Now again, another edge case to be aware of, if P is empty, then we return 0 because this array A has no peaks. Else, if the size of P is 1, meaning we have one single peak, we can immediately return 1, kind of a shortcut for efficiency. Then we reach the part where most of the magic happens. So I'm declaring two integers, C equal to 1 and M equal to 0. C is the number of flags. It's a counter of the number of flags we are putting on the peaks. And M is a variable that will hold the maximum number of peaks that we could set so far. Then we start our for loops, and we are going to test with different k, with different initial number of flags that we are taking on the trip. Remember, we have to try many um, iterations before we reach our solution. So we are going to start, as we said in the uh, algorithm description, with the minimum number between the number of peaks, which is p dot size, or the square root of the size of the array A, because this is the maximum that we could fit in such an array, the maximum number of flags. But because I'm casting the square root of the size of A into an integer, I might be losing like one unit, for example. So in this case, I could put a plus one here to make up for this. It doesn't bother our solution. It's one more iteration. And starting with this maximum number of flags, which is the minimum between these, the size of P and the uh, square root of N, we are going down with K to one flag. So we are going to start, let's say, with 10 flags, but then with 9, if it doesn't work, then 8, then 7, and so on. But the least is one flag. And then I'm decrementing k, the number of flags I'm taking with me on the trip. And for this, we are going to execute the following. We need the last flag index. So this is an integer. It will serve to calculate the distance between the last flag and the current flag that I'm trying to set. And for each iteration of k, for each number of flags, I'm resetting the number of flags I'm setting so far to 1. And then for int i equal to 1, and i is less than p dot size, so I'm going through the peaks. If p i minus p the last flag index, meaning the distance of the current index where I'm at, the current position, minus the last place, the index of the last place where I set a flag is greater or equal than k, the number of flags that I'm varying here. And at the same time, I still have flags, meaning the uh, c is strictly less than k. I didn't set more flags than what I had in my backpack. In this case, I'm going to increment the number of flags that I have set, c++, and I'm going to update the last index of the last flag. So last f will be equal to i in this case, because I have just set a flag at this particular position, and I'm going to keep in memory in this variable the last position of uh, the last flag. And so in this for loop, I'm going to set flags on as many peaks as I can, respecting the rules. And at the end, still for the certain number k of flags, if c is less than the maximum, then m, I'm going to return m in this case. In other words, if I have reached a new k value where I had a maximum number of set flags previously found, I'm going to return m instead because from now on, I'm going to decrease the number of set flags, which is c. So as soon as I find that with certain configuration, I have c less than m, I'm going to return the maximum, the return m. Else, if it's not the case, if the maximum is less than C, which is the number of flags that I have just set in the current configuration, then I will update my maximum value of flags, M is equal to C. And this is it, this is the end of our solution. I'm going to continue looping over the number of K, the number of flags, decrementing this number until I find a number that is less 
And in this case, I'm going to return the maximum that I have found so far. So as soon as I detect that I'm decreasing the number of allowed flags in my problem, which is the number C, less than the maximum that I have found, there is no use of continuing the, uh, the loop. I simply can return M immediately and it works this way. So again, this is not an easy exercise. If you find it quite challenging, just have a break. Don't torture yourself with this for long. Come back later and it might take some time before you um, gain control over understanding this problem. In Python, the solution doesn't look much different than C++. We have a function that takes a list A, then we are testing if A has a length that is strictly lower than three, in which case we return zero. We define the empty list of peaks and for i in range from 1 to length of a minus 1, edges are excluded. We are going to look for peaks if a i is greater than a i minus 1 and a i is greater than a i plus 1. We append the index of the current position, which is a peak, to the um, list p, which is the list containing the indexes of all the peaks of array a. So again, if the length of P is equal to zero, meaning we don't have any peaks in this problem, we could safely return zero immediately. We can set no flags in such a problem. Otherwise, if the length of P is equal to one, we have one single peak, then obviously we can set only one flag in the problem. But if it's not the case, this is out of the way, we can continue to our algorithm. So this one doesn't fit on one single line, but just in Python, it should be, I think, on one line or k in range between the minimum, either the length of p, the number of peaks, or the square root of the length of a, the square root of n, the size of our list, plus one, just in order not to miss anything because of the integer casting. And we decrement k because remember, we are starting by the highest allowed number of peaks according to these two conditions. So we start with the highest number and then we decrement in order to find the maximum number of flags that we can set on the peaks in the problem. Then we have last f, which will hold the uh, index of the last flag that we have set, or maybe the position of the last peak on which we have set a flag. And the number of flags that we have set so far is equal to one. At least we would have one flag. The other edge cases were discarded before starting this loop. And for i in range between one and length of p, meaning we are roaming over all the peaks that we have in the vector p. So if the current position of the peak minus p, the last flag peak, the distance between both is greater or equal to k, then we have a rule that is satisfied and we can set a new flag. But on one condition, one additional condition, we still have flags to set. So if C, the number of flags we have set so far is still less than when we have taken at the beginning, the number K of flags. In this case, we can increment C, the number of set flags, and we update the position of the last flag we have set to the index I. And when we have set all the flags we can using this small for loop here, we are going to test if C, the number of set flags is less than the maximum if we find that the number of C, the number of flags that we have just set for a certain number in this iteration for a certain number of K flags is less than the maximum found so far, it means the more we go, the less K, remember K is decremented here. So if we continue in this loop, we are going to have less and less a number of flags. So it's no use of continuing the loop. In this case, we simply return the maximum immediately. We cut the program and we have our result. But if it's not the case, if the maximum is less than C, we have just set a number of flags that is higher than the maximum that we have found so far, then we simply update the uh, maximum. And this is basically it. This return M here is not mandatory. Actually, it's useless because anyway, we can remove it and we are going to return our maximum at this point. Okay, so this is it for this problem. To be honest, uh, finding the solution was challenging for me. However, the most challenging part was finding an explanation for the solution. I mean, how can I relay the message to people who are just starting in these challenging tasks? And the only advice I could give you is just take your time. Don't rush things. Don't push. Don't stress about it. It would block your learning process. Just take your time. Have a break. Maybe it would take you a week, like uh, reading 15 minutes or 20 minutes of this algorithm uh, every day. It's okay. Sometimes things take time. 
you shouldn't feel guilty about it or push yourself more than what you can afford. Anyway, I hope it was kind of helpful for you. Keep up the good work and see you next time.